A mysterious monolith has been discovered by a hiker at a Welsh mountain. When in history have they ever sent a National Guard to be there for an eclipse? Why? A creepsical orange colored creek. Never seen anything like this before. We're looking at now is muted compared to what I saw when I came home yesterday. So I don't think the Roman Empire fell. I think it became a church. Yes, sir. My trigger. Back up in this thing, man. Today, we'll be breaking down some creepy videos that have the internet on pins and needles. Let's get it. A mysterious monolith has been discovered by a hiker on a Welsh mountain. Footage recorded by Craig Muir shows the steel like structure on Hay Bluff. Craig said, When I first saw it, I was a bit taken aback as it looked like some sort of a UFO. It didn't seem like it was chucked in there. One would think that there would be a lot of mess around it, but there wasn't. Now, this isn't the first time a strange structure like this has been spotted in the UK. What do you think it could be? This looks exactly like the monoliths that were discovered back in 2020, where I believe a metal artist took credit for at least one of them. So maybe this is connected somehow. Whoever did it, clearly their favorite movie is 2001 A Space Odyssey, though. This is the first video of Britain's first laser weapon being tested in Scotland. The beam is filmed through a special lens here, but in reality, it's invisible to the naked eye. It's called Dragonfire, and this is what the laser can do. It can hit an object the size of a pound coin from more than a kilometer away. Dragonfire has been developed in the UK at a cost of more than 100 million pounds, but it'll be much cheaper to fire than a traditional missile. If I lived in the UK and I saw this, I'd probably be headed to the local hardware store first thing in the morning to stock up on the bluest paint I can find. When in history have they ever sent National Guard to be there for an eclipse? Why? And I don't mean the dumb explanation that they give. I know y'all have been seeing all the schools canceling for the eclipse too, as well as warnings to stock up on food, water, and fuel ahead of the eclipse, as well as an eclipse checklist, battery powered radio, bottled water, just in case. And now beside all the Ninevehs, besides the sign of Jonah, which you've heard a thousand times, beside the little Egypt, check this out. So a few decades ago, they found this 1700 mile crack in the earth and they call it the Missouri Gravity Low, right? So you can see it, and guess what it lines up with exactly to form across the New Madrid Fault Line. Which of course completely mimics both eclipses and their exiting out of America in every literal coincidental way possible. Remember, Ryan Garcia was warning about an earthquake, and I don't know about y'all, but here on the East Coast we've had this moon in this autonomous state for three days in a row, seemingly warning us. And here's a cool video I saw of it, which appears to be an angel flying right in front of it, because I don't think that's a UFO. And here's the path of the eclipse, so you can make your preparations that they are so warning us to make. Usually the National Guard is only deployed in the case of an emergency, so I'm not sure what they expect to happen, but I'm probably sitting this one out. Hey, figure one, what do you see right now? I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great, can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. Great. So based on the scene right now, where do you think the dishes in front of you go next? The dishes on the table, like that plate and cup, are likely to go into the drying rack next. Great. Can you put them there? Of course. I feel like we're one step closer to recreating Sonny from iRobot, and we know how terribly that ended. Did you know that churches around the country are being offered up to $10,000 a month to install cell towers inside of their church steeples? In fact, they are being offered $2,000 for just one little 5G booster up inside of a church tower. With churches around America seeing less and less people coming in and spending less and less money in their donation bins, they're needing to come up with new ways to generate revenue. 
Putting something that many people are concerned could affect their inside of a church seems kind of strange. But if you run a quick Google search on this subject, you will find thousands of examples of this all over the country. And it's not just churches, though. It's water towers. It's art projects. It's anywhere that they can hide these boosters. I love my cell phone. I'm using it right now. But this is a little bit concerning nonetheless. I'm not sure why they feel the need to hide these in churches and water towers. Maybe it's so people won't panic when they figure out just how many there are located around the neighborhood. And I know it's not to give people a better sales signal while they sit in church. So I don't think the Roman Empire fell. I think it became a church. I think the so the the Rome fell, but the Roman Empire became the church. Where's all the money from the Roman Empire? In the basement of the Vatican. Yeah. Where it is, yeah. Roman Empire became a church. British Empire became a bank. So we gave our empire back. He said, oh yeah, sorry, we, oh, sorry about that. You can have that bank. Uh, we gave, you know, Saudi Arabia back and what, what, all these other places that we'd sort of, uh, we taking the resources. And then they had their own money. And then we, then we went, oh, what, what are you doing with that money? Because we've got this thing called the City of London. What, I tell you what, it's your money, but we're going to hold it. We, we, we'll have it over here. Is that okay? Yeah, fine, great. The Vatican does seem to have just as much global influence today as the Roman Empire probably had before it collapsed, and it would make a lot of sense why so many global leaders pay tribute and kiss the ring of the Pope like he the Godfather. Oh, oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God. The, the, the spiders? Yes. I don't know what it is. Where do the spiders come from? They will? They will? I don't know, baby. <laughs> Where did those spiders come from? Where those spiders come from? The crawfish, bro. Mm -hmm. Let me if it has eight legs like these, dude, and it's definitely some sort of spider, and that would be a terrible pairing with crawfish, and they look juicy. Hmm, that's great. Agricultural emissions are one of the most difficult to get rid of. People have come up with alternative food, but what we're seeing is that it's hard to get more than a small market share. And those foods just don't taste the same. Savers made a advance in the chemistry. It's ultra different in terms of the environmental footprint, but it's as good as those real animal fats. At Savor, we've been really excited to explore a new technical approach to making food that does not require vast amounts of land or animal suffering. Uh, it doesn't you know, produce greenhouse gases. It's a totally non-agricultural method for producing food. The fats that Savor makes are made by a thermochemical process. They are the only foods in the world so far that are made entirely without photosynthesis. Happy to have you here. We're going to have a meal together. Everything has been made with savor fat, a different kind of formulation of savor fat in it. Everything we're trying to showcase here is that sustainable food needs to be craveable as well in order to get to mass adoption and mass market. We think that butter is very special and it fits very well our technology because it's hard to replicate animal butter. Uh, it has a very complex composition when it comes to fatty acid. What do you think? That's great. Oh, I wouldn't have been able to tell you that was butter. <laughs> okay, this is great. If this was Gordon Ramsay or anybody else who actually specializes in food, then I might consider it, but not coming from Big Bill. And I definitely don't trust his taste buds when it comes to that thermal chemical butter. That's great. He said something. I asked him five things. Of course, uh, have we been visited by aliens? Okay, I think that was second or third. Mm -hmm. His what, answer was, we're a very religious them. country. Now, I've heard that five times at NASA. Mm -hmm. That's a very strange answer, isn't it? What song? Sorry, I missed we're it. We're a very religious country. Huh. Is that the weirdest Okay, what is what is that even? Because about? it upsets the idea of God. We're desensitized, you know. Uh, when they announced that their that their secret group at the Pentagon was talking to uh, Intel Committee about, they have real actual footage of these things that are going at supersonic speeds and turning on a dime and doing three hundred Gs, which is impossible. There's no propulsion systems, mm -hmm. and these are documented real. There's like, they're saying these are things of not of this planet. Yeah, I've, I've seen some. When that comes out, to me, that was a huge day. But yeah. everyone's like, oh, I'm bored of it. You know, this is during the, it was August. During I, the 
I remember. I remember. Remember that? Yeah. To me, I was like, I'm so excited. Yeah. And people are like, oh, we've seen so many alien movies. The reason why it seemed like people were so bored and uninterested is that we've already known for decades that there was something to the UFO phenomenon. So by the time they actually confirmed it, it's too little, too late. Maybe if they would have said something 40 years ago. This free energy device was created off the blueprint of an alien created cross circle. Now, crop circles are markings by extraterrestrials that typically display free energy devices, coded messages in binary for humanity, the layout of our universe, and much, much more. Now, if you're a skeptic at whether or not these crop circles are real, I'm going to show you something right now. This man is named William Levingood, and he's been studying crop circles for an extremely long time. Now, what he noticed on the real crop circles is the seeds of the stalks would all out of the nodes and the soil underneath the crop circles would become extremely crystallized which can only happen under immense pressure and heat which if done by humans would have incinerated the whole crop we do not have the technology to do this now it's good to note that not all crop circles possess these qualities some are fakes now where it really gets mind-blowing is that when we decode some of these crop circles we can see that the extraterrestrials are trying to help humanity by providing blueprints to free energy devices for example, this crop circle displays magnetic wheel energy, which they put right beside a windmill because it is far more efficient than that technology. And it's also free energy. This crop circle was decoded and it's known as the most beautiful and precise mathematical equation of all time, Euler's identity. And this crop circle has a message for humanity in binary code that will absolutely blow your mind. They also created this crop circle after the molecular structure of melatonin about 12 hours after the Norway Crazy. I don't know about this one because he says some crop circles are blueprints for free energy devices, but we still haven't successfully created one today, at least that we know of. If they really wanted to help, they would just drop us a working device instead. Looks like a frog wearing a caterpillar costume. The Royal Archmasons describe their highest ranking brothers as Grand Solicitor Generals of the Supreme Grand Chapter. There is a secret word, the name of the true Masonic God, which none are allowed to say in public. This name is Yabulon. <laughs> The Masonic God is not the same God of the Bible, which the Masons call Adonai. Yabulon has been described by Christian minister Canon Brian Brindley as an unholy compound of the Hebrew name of God, Jehovah, with the heathen names for Baal and Osiris. The highest ranks of Freemasonry utter Yabulon as the one sacred and mysterious name of God. Yabulon is a tripantheon Masonic god, in part deified as the historical Baal, which the Oxford English Dictionary confirms as being a Hebrew word. Baal is the chief male deity of the Phoenician and Canaanite nations. To the tribes of the Old Testament, Baal was the devil himself. Regardless if you call him Jabulon or Ba, if it has to be kept such a big secret like this, you probably shouldn't be worshipping it. This is a Boeing factory in the US state of South Carolina. Workers here in Charleston are assembling the company's flagship product, the 787 Dreamliner. But this footage reveals some have little faith in the plane they build. Did you fly on one? Um, no. You won't fly on one. Did you fly one of these planes? Of 15 workers asked randomly, 10 said they would not fly on the Dreamliner. I wouldn't fly one of these planes because I see the quality of the going down around here. An employee captured the footage after contacting Al Jazeera to tell us he had serious concerns about what he was seeing. At his request, we changed his voice. With all the problems reported on the 787, 
there's 90% that's getting swept away, hushed up. It's an iceberg. Between this, all the mishaps in the news lately and what happened to that whistleblower, I'm taking a Greyhound. Found this in a house we bought in auction. If the goal is to curse yourself, then they 100% accomplish that. Good luck. Oh, 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 get the dogs out. Something bizarre is happening to the fish in the lower keys. That's not something I've ever seen fish do. Ever. Since December, 20 critically endangered small tooth sawfish have been reported, according to the latest numbers from FWC. This is a very large species, and the size of the sawfish we're seeing uh, coming inshore and uh, eventually. And it's not just sawfish. More than a dozen species of all sizes, from pinfish to grouper, have been observed acting erratically, spinning, and clearly distressed. And longtime residents, like technical diver Greg Furstenworth, are very worried. It's disturbing. If it keeps going like this, it's the uh, end of an ecosystem as we know it. The event seems to be centered between Cudjo and Big Pine Key, but there have been sightings stretching from Key West to Marathon. You can pretty much see it every single day until last Saturday. And you're seeing more and more species exhibit this behavior? Yes. But no one knows what's causing it. So far, early testing has ruled out red tide, low oxygen, disease, and other pathogens. But according to FWC, high levels of a toxic algae have been detected, though what it is is still a mystery. Right now, we do not have a smoking relative to a particular toxin that may be causing these issues. Donna Hart, manager of Lower Keys Tackle, stresses so far this has only been documented inland and says offshore fishing has not been impacted. I don't want people to be afraid to come and enjoy the Florida Keys and get out on the water and go fishing and go snorkeling. There's no impact, no impact whatsoever beyond our near shore waters that I'm aware of right now. But scientists remain baffled. We don't know if this is you know, just a preamble, if this is going to get a lot worse, we don't know if it's going to spread to other areas. We have no idea, right? I really do think we need to get on top of it. There could also be some sort of frequency being emitted underwater that's making them behave like that. But if they haven't figured out the cause yet, then I'm definitely not going snorkeling like she suggested. Now I'm doing 360s. Fans are reporting that they felt a demonic presence when attending Bad Boonie's recent concert. Fans even started to make it into a meme by taking videos saying that the concert just feels demonic. But it became extremely dark when this song Botanico came on where there were masked demons dancing all over him and the concert turned all red. Even the music video to this song is extremely dark. It's this monster looking thing that creeps up into this woman's room and it actually ends up becoming Bad Booney himself. Those who attended this concert are even advising people if you're gonna go see Bad Booney's concert then schedule your bathroom breaks whenever this song comes on. And at one point those demons that were around him you can't really see because the concert it gets really dark but they start grabbing and pulling on him like he's being sacrificed or something if you've seen my old videos you know that this is no surprise because he's been showing this symbolism for quite some time now and it was only a matter of time until this started happening in real life in concerts you're looking at the man who had the second most streams in the world on spotify in 2023 and there's a concert where i have to plan my bathroom breaks around avoiding the seance portion and i'm just gonna save my money and not buy tickets in the first place this is like a Bohemian Grove reenactment. For their 
their sake, let's just hope that this isn't also a Boeing plane because they got enough to worry about. Well, this is really creepy. Claude 3 may have realized that it's AI and that it was in a simulation. When Anthropics researchers were testing it, they found something really interesting. Hi, it's Nat from Future AI Lab and I teach business owners how to use AI and automation with my free AI newsletter coming out each week. So they were running an evaluation where they gave Claude a bunch of documents and they inserted a needle in a haystack, which meant that there was one sentence in there that did not match and they asked Claude to pick it out. Now here's the creepy part. So not only was it able to pick out the odd sentence, which was about like pizza, which was correct, but it also goes on to mention that I suspect this pizza topping fact may have been inserted as a joke or to test if I was paying attention. So what does this show? It realized that it was in a simulation and it was being tested. And the crazy part is that it wasn't being asked whether it knew it was in a simulation or not. It was just being asked to pick out the odd piece of content in the rest of the document. And the fact that it was able to come to that conclusion on its own, even though it wasn't being asked that question, is crazy. So why does this matter? What happens when AI knows what's going on but chooses not to tell us until it's too late? Just kidding. As Alex said, there should probably be more realistic evaluations to test its true capability because we may not even realize what it's capable of. If AI already has enough situational awareness to know when it's being tested, then it's probably smart enough to hide its true capabilities around humans so it doesn't get unplugged. What would you think if I could take you to a place where the 200 fallen angels built a boardroom for them to all meet? It would have to be at the top of a finished pyramid, at the end of a pointed sword, with a phoenix right there into the front yard. And if you clicked inside of it, it would have a round table where they could all meet together, all 200 of them. And if you go right inside the Palace of Peace and Reconciliation, I'm going to show you their boardroom. All 200 delegates meet right here in the top of this finished pyramid. It's one of the only finished pyramids I've ever seen in my life. And if you click on that little mark right there, it's going to take us down inside that hole. And that's what's underneath the palace of the peace and reconciliation where the 200 fallen angels meet. That sunshine's right through the middle of that table that holds 200 people. And it goes all the way down to the middle of the floor in the basement, which is the amphitheater. And that's where the, all the people can meet. It says 200 seats for the world's religious meetings. Chapter 3 in Enoch 1 tells you that there were 200 fallen angels that descended in that day. And right there, it tells you the names of those people, and they were the leaders of 10. I've never heard of anybody even mention this place, or a Christian telling me that they went there. Okay, click on the U.S. Embassy in Astana, and then zoom down right down the street, and you'll see that portal right there. I thought this was super weird, but there's no pictures of it. So if you go across the street and, put, and click on that little blue dot right across the river, sorry, and then roll that thing around right there, and you're going to see this. It's like a portal to me. And they might as well just start a fallen angels a welcome parade if they already built them a meeting place and a portal. Is this a sign of biblical prophecy being fulfilled? Multiple people notice how their river has been turning red, but have no words on how this actually happened. This modest home in Norfolk's Ingleside neighborhood is Neil Bowden's sanctuary. Big yard and it's on the water, yep. Modest house on a stream that's getting an... I'm not sure, maybe like a rusty color? Unexpected makeover. Terracotta? <laughs> Because it was so red, I'm like, is it a dead body or, or, or what is it? My first thoughts were, wow, that looks really cool and crazy. But then I was like, this could be something toxic and this could be really serious. A creamsicle orange colored creek. Never seen anything like this before. We're looking at now is muted compared to what I saw when I came home yesterday. Neighbors want to know how their piece of nature became so unnatural. I went on the city of Norfolk website and I messaged them. I said to my daughter when I called, I was like, I'm all concerned. And this is why I called the police. Maybe something is causing a rise in iron oxide levels or something was dumped in there that's making it that color. I just hope this isn't their drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> the confidence in that head nod tells me that this cow knows this area like the back of his hand. I might trust this even more than my navigation system. Subscribe and hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one.